Hey guys, Brittany here with Brits Mass Media. We're doing a podcast this time because <laughs> camera issues, you know, the love of Comic-Con. But I am here, and I'll let him introduce himself, and you guys just respond. I'm Nicholas Padani. Um, I'm playing Alvis Severs Potter on Broadway. Oh my god! It's, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's so lovely. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, how long have you been playing Albus so far? Give everyone a little taste of how long you've been doing this now. Sure. So, I started rehearsals in December. So, I've been with this project for seven months now. Um, but I only started performing in March. So, I've been performing for four months. But, yeah, we had a three-month rehearsal process. And I found out I got the role on October 4th uh, of last year. So, there was, a, there was a big period where I couldn't tell anybody. Um, except for like my family, and uh, well, that was that was one of the toughest moments was to you know know that I was about to like live my Harry Potter fan dream and uh, not be able to tell anyone. But yeah. What were you doing when you found out that you got the role? Um, I was shooting a pilot. Uh, I was shooting a uh, 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 a TV pilot for um, I think it was for Amazon, and there was a scene in it where I, my character had to kill himself. And we were setting up for the close-up shot of me about to kill myself. And I went outside, and I got the call. And they, hadn't, they, they were setting up inside. I went outside, got the call, just started crying, called my mom about seven times to let her know. She was teaching in the middle of the class. Um, and then, so she, like, and I was like, but you can't tell anybody. So she had to continue teaching the class knowing this information. Then I called my dad. You know, he freaked out. Then I called my sister. And I was like, I'm going to be playing Albus on Broadway. And she said, I just found out I'm pregnant. And so, like, it was the best day of all time. Yeah, it was the best It was the best day. That's so crazy. And so then right to... after that, you know, they called me back in and I had to pretend to be, you know, super sad. Yeah, exactly. It was insane. Yeah. It must have been very hard on that day, huh? Yeah, probably the hardest acting I've had to do. Because <laughs> it was the happiest moment of my life, pretending to be the saddest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very understandable. So, with being Albus on stage and knowing how big the franchise is, how many people have followed it for years, how did you carry the aspect of the magic on screen onto the stage for your character? Sure. I mean, so as far as the actual on stage magic goes, um, I'm just the messenger. The genius is really in all the creative teams. You know, the magic creative team, the movement creative team. They have made a show that will truly take your breath away. Like, it's insane. Um, and to put that on stage where, you know, in the movies, it, so in the books, you only have your imagination for the magic. In the movies, you get to really see the magic uh, happen through special effects. But on stage, uh, John Tiffany, our director, liked to say that um, it's a combination of both. We, it, we have the audience there, so we ask them to use their imaginations in really creative ways to help us perform the magic. And people buy in so much into it that it, that it ends up, you know, totally working. As far as um, going into such a beloved franchise, um, I, was, I was nervous until I got on stage and I realized, oh no, everyone loves this. Everyone loves going back to Hogwarts. All you want to do is go back to Hogwarts. Like, and when you get the opportunity to, to, to be a wizard and to... Um, uh, to, to, to be a wizard and to, you know, experience magic like you were a kid again, I mean, that's, that's invaluable. That's so lovely. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the final questions is, did you have to collaborate with the past uh, actor who played the older Albus Severus, or what did you use to get into the character, essentially? Well, I did, definitely didn't have to collaborate with him, but uh, he was such a kind soul and such a lovely guy and I loved his interpretation of Albus that yeah I ended up asking him a few questions the lovely thing is that I got to see his Albus and realized um, I can't touch that like that's not mine at all he is a very different person from a very different background who brings his own stuff to that character and I'm from a very different background and a different culture and so I'm going to bring my own thing to the character so and what was lovely is that um, all the directors all the creative teams were um fully for all of the actors bringing something new to all of our characters so I just I, I decided to take a totally different route and make um, Albus a really misunderstood Weasley you know like he's he's mostly a Weasley he's got the uh, crazy ideas of Fred and George he's got the determination and stubborn love of Ginny and then he's got um, you know the, the funny bone and the 
loyal best friend love of Ron, and and you know, and then you know Charlie and Bill, the the bravery of you know, and definitely not the cool aspect from Bill, but you know something, something, yeah. Sorry, just a question. Yes, please. Uh, just me. Sorry, no. coffee break. <laughs> no, that's okay. Again, live of Comic Con. Yeah, I know. Okay, one of my final questions is: yeah. if you had the chance to tell everyone who fall in love with this community who has not, for some reason, seen Curse Child or even read the book, what would you tell them to get them back into the magic that they know and love? Um, I mean, I sympathize. I sympathize if you haven't seen the show. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to see the show because you know we we, we have it in New York and now it's opening in San Francisco. Um, so, you know, if you're in middle America, or nowhere close to Australia, or nowhere close to London or Hamburg, I mean, you know, we have satellite cities, but I recognize how hard it is for people to get out there. So, I mean, I'm not judging anybody who hasn't seen it, um, but if you do have the chance, especially to see it, because reading it is one thing. I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, obviously an actor, and I've read my fair share of scripts, and they've released it as a script version, and often I see... Uh, it's, it's hard if you've never read a script before. But to see it live is invaluable. It's uh, uh, such an experience. For me, every night, and you know, I've been doing it for, uh, for four months, but for every audience, all we hear is just how um, beautiful it is to be brought back to the magic, to be brought back to that feeling you had when you were a kid and you believed you were a wizard. I mean, I had that. I know everybody had that, that you were let in on this little secret that J.K. Rowling let you in on, that, no, you're right. You are different. You are magical. Um, and when you're in a theater, when you know, because when you're reading the books, you're usually reading the book by yourself or maybe with a book club, but when you're in a theater full of sixteen to 1,700 people and everybody knows how magical they are, Oh, there's nothing like it in the whole world. There's nothing like it. And, it's, and, and we take you on an amazing story as well. I mean, it's, a, it's an original, amazing story that happens 19 years after the uh, seventh book ended. And it's brand new. And it's, um, I think it's uh, quite masterful. I think it's really lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you have the chance to go see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, either in New York or in San Francisco, please take the time to do so. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Take care.